Welcome back everybody. Some of you may have seen my video on the top three programming languages to learn. This is going to be a little bit of a twist on that. The worst three programming languages. So I would highly advise against wasting your time learning these languages. Unfortunately, these are some popular languages, so I am expecting some hate mail. But just because something's popular doesn't necessarily mean you should try it. Remember that, kids. Okay, Caleb, prepare for hate comments. Number one, PHP. You mean the most popular back-end web development programming language? That's right. I know some of you guys are gonna be real mad, but I just have to say it. The reason PHP is popular is by force, not by choice. A lot of the websites that are powered by PHP are using a content management system. A content management system essentially makes it very easy for a non-technical person to create content. So the most popular content management system is WordPress. But most people using WordPress don't really care what it was programmed in. It could have been programmed in Fortran for all they care. Now there are a lot of PHP frameworks and maybe that would make the experience a little bit better, but still, I would kind of have a hard time knowing that I'm still coding in PHP. Kind of like having the sports version of a smart car. Right, it's, it's still a smart car. Some of you that have used these PHP frameworks, please leave me a comment and let me know what your experience is. In attempts to keep this video pretty simple and to the point, I'm not gonna get into a ton of detail. There is a blog out there of all the reasons why PHP sucks. You can find that in my blog, which will be linked in the description below. Essentially though, PHP is really suited for small scale or medium scale applications. And I really don't feel like it's designed to scale to the types of applications people are building today. And there are a lot of other weird things about PHP. PHP has a ton of functions available for use, but the naming conventions are no way consistent. So you really have a hard time memorizing what things are called. One thing that drives me crazy though is PHP uses double equals and then triple equals. And these are not the same thing. And when you're using PHP, most of the time you're going to want to use the triple equals. But this is not really the experience you expect using other languages like C Sharp or C++. That's just some of the reasons, but I would highly encourage you to read the rest of that article. Now, if you wanna know what to learn instead of PHP, I left some top resources for you guys in my blog as well. The second one, Visual Basic, or VB.net, or VBA, or every other variation of the same thing. <laughs> I hear a lot of people say that Visual Basic is great for beginners because it's basic, it's simple. Although this might be true, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a good thing for a developer to learn, right? Because of the same reasons. In fact, according to the developer Stack Overflow survey, Visual Basic and the variations were labeled as the most dreaded languages of 2018. How would you like to be an expert in the language everybody hates? <laughs> and on that note, can you actually be an expert in Visual Basic? Basic literally stands for beginner's all-purpose symbolic instruction code. So if you say, oh yeah, I'm an expert in Basic, you're basically saying you're an expert at being a beginner. Does that even make sense, right? I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm really good at being a beginner. Visual Basic is part of the .NET framework, which is a really good framework built by Microsoft that allows you to do a plethora of things. So that is about the only thing good with Visual Basic in my opinion. The worst part of all though is the reputation for Visual Basic is terrible. Hey man, nice to meet you. I noticed you were reading a book on development. Uh, what, what languages do you know? Yeah, I've been getting into development. I, uh, I'm studying Visual Basic, actually. That, that, that's nice. <laughs> well, I'll, uh, I'll see you around. Well, nice to see you. He was so nice. The fact that Visual Basic is designed for beginners shows that you're likely going to get a lot of hand-holding. And as a result, you're not going to be well-versed in programming and you're not likely to be able to switch to different programming languages as easily. One thing that I think is totally ridiculous that Visual Basic does for beginners is it gets rid of the double equals and replaces it with a single equals. For those of you who are well-versed in other languages, you should know that equals does not equal equal equals, which would be a sweet shirt logo, which I already took the idea, so don't go creating that. <laughs> the single equals is used for assignment. So you could say int x equals five. 
The double equals is used for comparison, saying, is this thing equal to this thing? What Visual Basic does is it will decide which one you're trying to do based on the context. If you're within an if statement, it will use it as a comparison. This is a really bad thing though, because in other languages, you can actually use a single equals inside of an if statement. So for example, you could say if size equals 15, return true. And in this situation, for certain languages, this will always return true because you're doing the assignment operator. So you're basically setting the value of size to 15. But in Visual Basic, that would only be true if the value is 15. And then in other languages, it's going to give you a compiling error. So by using Visual Basic, you're setting yourself up to failure for different languages. This one thing alone is enough for me to be convinced that there's probably a lot of other little things that they're doing to help beginners that is actually hurting beginners when they want to develop their computer science career. And the third one, hmm, what could it be? Drum roll, Objective C. Now I know some of y'all are gonna be like, what, did you just say Objective C? Yes, I said Objective C. <laughs> Objective C is actually really popular. It's used to build iPhone applications. Now I am not suggesting that you don't build iPhone applications. There are alternatives to Objective-C. Now if you already know Objective-C, I would say that the language is good enough to stay and continue to use Objective-C or learn an alternative. But there is not this terrible reputation around Objective-C. The primary reason I suggest against learning Objective-C is because there is a language out there that has become basically the focus of Apple, and that is Swift. Objective-C is still supported, but the primary focus is Swift. So by learning Objective-C, you're basically setting yourself up to have skills in an obsolete programming language. And this is something you definitely don't want to do, especially with things changing so fast. You always want to stay up to date with the most latest technologies and languages. Swift is actually a very popular language. It's one of the fastest growing languages. So by learning Swift, not only do you avoid learning a soon to be obsolete language, but you're learning a language that has a very strong positive reputation and is in extreme demand. So I would highly recommend learning Swift. And if you're using Objective-C already, you should still learn Swift, but it's not gonna kill you using Objective-C in parallel. I don't think it's a good replacement for Swift with what we should expect in the future, which is a continued focus on Swift as more and more people adopt it. So that concludes this video of the worst three languages for you to learn. What are your thoughts? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Is there a language you think should be added on this list? Or is there a language that should be removed from this list? As a final note, I would suggest you check out my blog, which is going to basically give you a replacement language for each one of these. So if you don't wanna learn PHP, what you should focus on, or if you don't wanna learn Visual Basic, what you should focus on. And on top of that, I have a language that didn't quite make the list for other reasons, but I would encourage you to go check it out because I have some extra notes down at the bottom of my blog. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.